JobPro is a file maker based database and if you're using the multi-user version well then if you've got more than say a couple of users it's recommended that you use FileMaker Server to host JobPro on a dedicated machine. You can also run JobPro using FileMaker Server on an existing server just assuming that that server doesn't have too much workload with other tasks like maybe document management functionality and other functions that you may be using that server for. So either way, whether you're using a dedicated machine or a server that has multi tasks happening on it, you'd install FileMaker Server on that server. So let's take a look at the FileMaker Server admin console. So when you log in here, the first thing that you'll need to do is to upload the JobPro database that you've either downloaded from a trial version or that you've been given if you purchased JobPro. So first of all, if we take a quick look at the, the folder structure of the JobPro folder. Here, for example, we've got the JobPro folder and we've got a set of folders in here as well, one called Files, another called Import Files. This contains spreadsheets that you can use to populate with your own data to import into JobPro. But primarily we've got the JobPro database itself. So the important folder in here is the Files folder because this stores documents and other images that are used in the JobPro system. Now it's important that when you upload the JobPro file to the FileMaker server machine that instead of copying the full JobPro folder into the specific location on the server that you actually use the upload feature within the FileMaker server application. So let's have a quick look at that. So here we are logged into the FileMaker server admin console and there's an option up here to upload. So if we selected that option then we can browse to where the job pro folder is let's say on the server desktop or on your own desktop then you'd select the file the job profile and what that will do is it'll automatically pull any related documents coming from the files folder it'll move them automatically into the FileMaker server databases folder as well so let's go back into FileMaker server admin once you've uploaded the job profile including the various documents folders that will automatically be uploaded. If you then look at the databases tab you'll then see the job profile and you can have it automatically set to normal which means it's open and available for other users to access the database over the network. It's also important to set up schedule backups of the database from within here as well. We recommend that at least three backups can be done every day of the week and that they don't get overwritten until the following week. So that way if there was a power cut or something that happened to the hard drive during the week then at least you've got a full week's backups before they get overwritten. Now the backups are normally stored on the same drive as the FileMaker server is running off. So you'll also use your own backup mechanism or application to backup the backup files off that computer and onto a separate drive or a separate location. So once the JobPro database is open and available for users over the network, what you would do then is you'd open up FileMaker and you'd select Open Remote and in the Open Remote dialog box it will search the network and it will display in the host dialog box the name of the server and when you click on that it will show the name of the job profile where you click on that to open it. There's lots more information on setting up FileMaker Server in the FileMaker Server admin PDF guide that will be installed in the FileMaker Server folder on your server. FileMaker Server can run either on a Windows or Mac platform and the user can access JobPro either from a Windows or a Mac as well. 
You can also access Job Pro using the free FileMaker Go app for the iPhone and iPad that's available on the, on the Apple Web Store.